about the injustice, the outrage of human trafficking, which must be called by its true name, modern slavery. Every year, millions of innocent girls and boys are trafficked throughout the world. At any given time, close to 27 million people are in bondage. Human trafficking is the world's second most lucrative organized crime, trailing only the illicit drug trade. Profits from the sex trade alone account for nearly $32 billion annually. This criminal enterprise affects every country on earth. It exists in Texas and its cities and towns. Because Texas shares a 1,200 mile border with Mexico, it has to deal with some of the worst human trafficking cases. And 14 year olds that are being prosecuted right now in this city, in this county, and they have been doing it for a long time. We are for We are anywhere else in the United States. We are for We didn't even know it was happening. So the people that were running the bar here in Fort Worth, they wanted young girls to work. But they wanted young girls that they could control. Research suggests that few crimes perpetrated on children more detrimental to their physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being than forced prostitution. The average age of these prostitutes, 12. truth is that trafficking also goes on right here in the United States. That's slavery. Houston serves as the epicenter of the human trade in Texas because of its proximity to the U.S.-Mexico border, the nation's largest international port in Galveston, three airports, one of which is international, and until recently, relatively lax rules for non-street prostitution. Due to the extremely subversive nature of human trafficking and its close ties to the sex trade, there is a dearth of exact quantitative data for the numbers of women abducted and sold into slavery every year. However, we do know that there are over 200 active brothels operating in Houston, with an estimated two new ones opening every month, compensating for the numbers shut down by the Houston PD. The major cities of Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio are all connected by the interstate highway network known as the I-35 corridor. In an interview with the head of the sex crimes unit of the San Antonio Police Department, Sergeant Bill Grayson made it extremely clear that the traffickers use the I-35 corridor as a major tool in the clandestine transportation of abductees. As human trafficking has become increasingly publicized in recent years, the San Antonio Police Department has begun to rely on public outreach as its main method of fighting vice crime. The goal of this outreach program is to increase public awareness about human trafficking by sending speakers to schools, advertising on billboards, and putting all human trafficking cases in the newspaper in hopes that locals call in any suspicious behavior that could possibly be a case of human trafficking. Sergeant Grayson believes that if the general public of San Antonio is aware of human trafficking taking place in their community, and if they know what signs to look for, then there will be a significant decrease in the unforgivable crime. In recent years, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex has grown to rival Houston and San Antonio as a major hub of the sex trade. DFW has several major interstate highways running through it, giving traffickers an easy and relatively low-risk method of transporting their victims. These interstates attract the sex business that gives traffickers the constant stream of business opportunities they need for their line of work to be economically feasible. The Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport gives traffickers a risky but effective way to trade women internationally also. Dallas-Fort Worth also has various professional and collegiate sport teams with big venues, which create a high demand for the commercial sex industry. 
The Super Bowl, held in Dallas in February of 2011, was an event that gave Fort Worth law enforcement authorities an opportunity to make many human trafficking busts in the area. This American tradition creates the biggest demand for the sex industry because a huge population of rowdy men come to the city with money to burn and looking for a good time. San Antonio, Houston, and DFW have a few key traits in common, which unfortunately make them major hubs in Texas and the United States. First off, the city's close proximity to the Mexico border is a permanent issue. Each area is very highly populated, with over a million people and containing huge amounts of diversity, where minority groups make up the majority of the population making the identifying process for authorities much more difficult because the international victims almost blend in with the crowd. Each have fast, simple sources of transportation running through the core of them, major interstates and international airports. Each city has at least one elite championship contending sports team, producing demand that is impossible to quell. These factors, all of which are permanent, give traffickers easy business with low risk involved which make each city a valued and targeted one for human traffic. The poorest Texas-Mexico border is the avenue through which most illegally trafficked victims enter the United States. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement delineates the border into five regions, the Big Bend, Del Rio, El Paso, Laredo, and Rio Grande Valley sectors. Because public awareness is such a proven crime-fighting tool, the Department of Homeland Security and Department of Education are partnering to help people better recognize human trafficking around them. In 2010, the President's Interagency Task Force launched the largest anti-trafficking campaign in United States history. Known as the Blue Campaign, it unites 17 of the 20 Homeland Security agencies in the fight against human trafficking. The Blue Campaign's goal is to leverage executive department resources in order to deter human trafficking through raising awareness, improving the criminal justice response, and protecting past victims. Law enforcement's biggest asset for finding traffickers is a vigilant citizenry willing to report suspicious behavior. Hold on to me as we go. I had been raped, beaten, kidnapped, thrown in the back of trunks. Because trafficking victims tend to be female runaways, there's a tremendous effect on the family structure. Even with the staggering growth in human trafficking in the last two decades, most of the world's efforts focus on law enforcement and criminal prosecution rather than victim health and rehabilitation. Would-be kidnappers tend to be very adept observers of human nature. I was living in Addison and uh, he pulled up to me when I was walking to a friend's house, told me how beautiful I was and that I deserved finer things in life. And I had been living in a really not the best home life. My mom was doing her own thing. My dad was absent. Um, so to have that man pay attention to me and to show interest in me, and you know, it made you feel good. And whenever I got with him, he started giving me drugs, which made me feel even better. So it's just having that man just tell you everything that you've always wanted to hear. And They are so good at just like, just, just finding that person, that, that little girl, or even there it happens to little boys, like, they're just so good at just picking us out of the crowd because they can smell it. They can smell how naive we are. They can smell how, like, hurt deep down inside we are. Like, they, they, they take total advantage of us. And he, question led us back to is the reality of a hyper-sexualized culture mm -hmm. that is awakening this unprecedented demand for illicit sex.
A sense of justice that says no child should ever be exploited. That has to be burned into the cultures of every country. Ask Sheila White, who grew up in the Bronx, fleeing an abusive home. She fell in with a guy who said he'd protect her. Instead, he sold her, just 15 years old. 15, to men who raped her and beat her and burned her with irons. And finally, after years, with the help of a nonprofit led by other survivors, she found the courage to break free and get the services she needed. Sheila earned her GED. Today, she is a powerful, fierce advocate who helped to pass a new anti-trafficking law right here in New York. cycle can be broken. Since the year 2000, the United States federal government has given just over $100 million to aid in the battle against human trafficking. In comparison, the U.S. government has given an average of $437 million a year since 1980 to stop the war on drugs. What is it that creates a precedence of substance abuse over human life? The price of PTSD rehab is about $1,500 a course, and the government donates $2 million a year for treatment, but only for military veterans. The federal government must reevaluate their priorities, where they send money to aid humanity. Statistics show that trafficking victims forced into the sex trade experience a significantly higher rate of HIV, other sexually transmitted diseases, tuberculosis, and permanent damage to their reproductive systems. Additionally, many of these girls suffer from depression, lack of energy, loss of appetite, difficulty sleeping, and lack of concentration. Not only do they need help recovering from physical abuse, but the immense mental strain they are under, which can result in insidious and subversive psychological issues, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. The assault, rape, and forced abduction of these girls require that they get clinical and medical treatment as soon as possible if they are to be saved. Studies suggest that each victim needs a directed and comprehensive plan of treatment. However, there is a shortage of doctors and clinics that specialize in human trafficking health rehabilitation. Currently, only 68% of trafficking victims worldwide ever get help. One of the largest and most powerful groups advocating for watershed change in the way treatment is handled are NGOs, or non-governmental organizations. These groups coordinate with local and federal law enforcement agencies to combat human trafficking and to rehabilitate these victims. do even more to help victims recover and rebuild their lives. We'll develop a new action plan to improve coordination across the federal government. We're increasing access to services to help survivors become self-sufficient. In 2010, the Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force, founded by the Department of Justice, reorganized and expanded as the North Texas Trafficking Task Force. It consists of 18 local, state, and federal agencies working with the Dallas and Fort Worth Police Departments. In addition to traditional law enforcement agencies, the NTTTF also works with three nonprofit service providers across North Texas, Mosaic Services, Safe Haven, and Traffic 911. Traffic 911 started in the inner cities of Fort Worth and due to its success spread throughout Texas and into other parts of the United States. Traffic 911's published mission is to end the buying and selling of American children. Its focus is specifically to rescue individuals under the age of 18. Traffic 911 has a three-step plan to combat human trafficking. The first step is prevention. 
In order to quell the selling of children, Traffic 911 is trying to build awareness about what trafficking actually is and to educate and inform people to show that trafficking happens right in their backyards. The second step is the rescue and rehabilitation. Traffic 911 works to achieve this by training citizens to notice the red flags of trafficking and by leveraging high demand events like the Super Bowl or the Olympics. Once victims are identified, the final step is restoration. Victims are taken to a long-term safe house where they are given specialized care for holistic healing. Traffic 911 is an organization that has become necessary in North Texas and throughout the United States. It is helping to put a stop to human trafficking through its commitment to social justice and human rights. Every citizen can take action by learning more, by going to the website that we helped to create, slaveryfootprint.org, by speaking up and insisting that the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the products we buy are made free of forced labor, by standing up against the degradation and abuse of women. That's how real change happens. You know, mankind killed God, so it's not really that shocking that they're willing to exploit his creation. What's shocking is the fact that hardly anybody's doing anything about it. We see you. We hear you, we insist on your dignity, and we share your belief that if just given the chance, you will forge a life equal to your talents and worthy of your dreams. Some nights I stay up cashing in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a draw. Some nights I wish that my lips could build a castle. Some nights I wish they just fall.